you can see temperature compensated balance wheel is by metal so the inside is steel outside is brass and the brass a bit thicker so what happens is the steel and the brass the brass will expand more than steel so if they're close together and the brass will expand more steel then it goes like this and that will compensate for the difference in length in the balance spring if i am the balance wheel and my arms when uh, it becomes warmer the uh, brass will make sure the arms go inside right we got some more viewers over there <laughs> so balance wheel when it's cold it will go outside so cold warm cold warm fast slow so if the temperature becomes higher the balance spring becomes longer so slow but the arms will move inwards so the balance wheel will move quicker temperature compensated balance wheel uh, invented by john harrison in the late 1700s i think about 1760 1780 so Temperature compensated balance wheel. Uh, it was simply too small for a pin vise. Look at the glistening, there is still a huge amount of oil. So this side's completely empty, except for the capstone for the balance wheel. So I'm going to help the balance wheel a bit carbon tip tweezers and I'm going to help the balance spring with the very heavy balance upside down there we go no stress well lovely pellet fork well done so now I remove the pellet fork first so when I work on the movement, the gear train can run free um, I won't bang against uh, the pellet fork if I work on it. Lovely small detail, but it's all in the detail. I just removed the pellet fork bridge. Just a nice design, uh, not too elaborate, but what I like even then is that the banking pins here are integrated in the pellet fork bridge do you see that lovely 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 design <laughs> do you see that here oil on the pellet fork there is something underneath the escape wheel a huge amount of oil but something else is it oxidation or it's just not that shiny I really would like to see it when it comes out of the cleaning machine could be even a very old fingerprint or moisture oh ah, forget the kant op the winding wheel which is a bit sticky there it is look at the oil oh, not again 
Okay, only remaining is the barrel and the gear train. So now I always do a small test. Here is the gear, the barrel. Oh, look at that center wheel. <laughs> what I do is I move the barrel back and forth between the teeth again not making any scratches like this and then you'll see immediately if there is play in the gear train just a nice end-to-end -end test and then you'll see get your hammers ready interesting is the uh, and shake you're right clearly uh, because there is no ruby on both sides on neither sides so you cannot change the end shake of the center wheel by changing the position of the ruby but this is way too much and if you probably you can see it this is the root cause why this uh, watch wasn't running. You can see it's lopsided. There is a lot of play. Oh well. Really curious how this pivot, what this pivot looks like. It's, uh, it's very, uh, you're absolutely right Amanda. For the End shake. This is end shake. This is division. Uh, I show you before, but a very simple trick. Just some peg wood in the arbor, and then you can. There is no end shake in the main barrel. Just side shake. Do you see that? There is some side shake, but no end shake. Hammer time again, but with watches like this, with movements like this, with the proper hammer. Maybe you're not familiar with the term hammer time. Sorry about that. Uh, hammer time is when a hole is worn and become too big, so the pivot moves inside the hole. You can make the hole smaller by using a hammer. Hammer time. Make it too small. Push the material back. So you uh, move, not remove, but move the material. And with movements like these, um, you can restore them in perfect condition uh, just by using hammer time and uh, make the hole in the right uh, size again. So everything stays original. It's really, uh, really a joy to work on uh, movements like these. Extremely tight this one. And remember the broken screw on the yoke. A screw doesn't break easily. You really have to do your best to break a screw, usually. So there is still something going on inside this movement, why the screw broke. Oh, lovely uh, click spring. That's a nice surprise. And this is not a nice surprise. The amount of oil and... Oh, look at that. It is so shiny because of the oil. This screw head is very shallow. So I have to use a 
smaller screwdriver. Let's see what's going on. Hey, look at that. I think it's worn because on one side, there, do you see that? It's so shallow that my screwdriver hardly fits. Interesting. So what do we... Oh, it's really sticking. Oh. Well, there you can see oil drops. I really would... Wow, that was sticky. Look at the old oil and horrible lubrication stuff. Now I really would love to see the pinion. Ah. Well, it did run for quite some time without lubrication because this should be straight. See if I can clean it in some Robico. And it's more visible now. There is the wear. And if you, it's Jaco time, definitely Paul. Um, and if you think that brass from the bridge is wearing the burnished hardened steel from a pivot, that only can mean one thing, that uh, with a dried if you're into that, we got a, a lubrication uh, video on our YouTube channel Chronoglide. If you got the jewel with the pivot sticking out. If you use lubrication here, it stays inside the jewel and lubricates the pivot. So far, so good. Old lubrication, especially uh, organic, uh, dries up and there's always some filings, some metal particles. And if it dries up, it is here. Usually not touching the pivot, but just dried up all horrible oil with metal flakes and particles. It will run dry for quite some time, but if you are a horrible lazy watchmaker and drop in a new drop of oil <laughs> that looks so, a bit like that if you drop a new drop of oil in the old dried up lubrication all the metal flakes and particles will dissolve in the new oil creep back into the pivot and you created a grinding paste because all the metal flakes will set in in here the bra this is a jewel but if it's brass it's even worse because the metal particles the flakes and the stuff the horrible grind will set in the inside of uh, the brass so you create a grinding paste if you do not clean and disassemble your watch it's horrible and with hammer time you push back the material uh, too small make it straight and back again and then the metal flakes and the, the horrible grinding crap 
uh, is flat again in the side. It is not, well, best is fresh material, make uh, an oversized hole, then place in blank material like brass. In a jig borer, make sure you know the exact position of the original hole. With a jig borer on the micron, uh, drill a new hole and make uh, the oil reservoir. That's the best way of doing. But if you're a lazy watchmaker, without cleaning your watch parts, you are killing the watch. It's horrible. Please have a look at our YouTube channel Chronoglide. Um, hope to see you next week. Choose every Tuesday, half past eight, Saturday European time. We've been streaming watch repair like this for four and a half years now. Don't say high water in the Netherlands. <laughs> True, Jay Woody. <laughs> so, um, hope to see you soon. Enjoy your evening. And uh, yeah, thank you for your support.